good lately, you're going to want to be there because to see all those men there just worshiping the Lord, crying out to them, it is a, it's definitely a life changing experience. So yes. let's let's stay busy and, and faithful about being about what God is doing. Yes. Amen. So Amen. we just again invite everybody you want. Pastor will be sending it out again to those that weren't on Easter is on the fourth to follow. Amen. So it's well, definitely a time to uh, invite your family, invite your friends. Again, we're an outside church. We've been there for 12 years. You can sit as far away from us as you want because we're pretty loud, amen? So you can hear us wherever you are. So we hope that you it, you take that opportunity and come and join us. Okay, let's get ready to pray and then let's get ready to get in our word, amen? Let's get ready to rumble. You guys, please have your Bibles. Pastor will call on you uh, possibly to read a few scriptures. Um, if, if you don't want to, you just tell him pass or anything like that. You don't have to. But if he calls on you, please be ready. We will be in Acts chapter 2. So again, we thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you soon. So if you all just bow your head and close your eyes as we come, Father God. Yes. Father God, we just come before you, Lord God, and we just thank you, Lord God. Father, we just give you all honor and praise, Lord God, because there's none like you, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, that you've made a way for every single one of us, Lord God. Lord, you are in the miracle business, Lord God, because we all know personally what you've done for each and every one of yes. us, Lord God. And we're going to thank you now, Lord God. We're going to ask you as we come together in unity and we come together in your word, Lord God, that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, Lord God. That you would continue to turn our heart towards you, Lord God. I come against any bindings of we're going to bind the distractions, irritations, random thoughts, Lord God. And we want to just come to you, Father, worshiping you, studying your word in spirit, Lord God. I just thank you, Father God, that each one of us will leave tonight different, Father God. That we will be more encouraged, Lord God. That we will understand who we are in Christ. We will understand that being in one accord and being in unity, uh, you uniform and being together in one accord and unity is 100 percent necessary yes. amen so help us lord draw our hearts to each other father god yes, we lord. just love you lord god we thank you father we ask that you would give pastor every word and every knowledge lord that you would speak through him lord god to help teach us father that you would just open his mouth and that everything he said would be just clear and we would just receive it with an open heart lord yes. we thank you father god for everything we love you just love you, Lord God. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. We don't know what we're doing, so we're trying to figure it. Hold on. Are you going this one, Dad? I'm going over there. Okay. And no Facebook live thing tonight. Um, if, if anyone wants a Facebook live, you can Facebook live. That's fine. I know nothing about that. So. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Get on over there, okay. sir. Okay. Grab me a Bible. There we go. Let's All rock right and roll. There. Ones Hallelujah, know. everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Nope. Yes. Hi, everybody. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful to see you guys tonight. Hallelujah. We've got a, a living room full of people tonight, and we're so excited about what God is doing. Amen. Teenagers. Amen. We've got a lot of teenagers yeah. in here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, hurry up, Pastor, finish that message. No, these are, these are the true evangelists right here. Amen. Right, right. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Okay, um, uh, let me grab a Bible. Uh, Acts chapter 2, if you got a Bible, we're in Acts chapter 2 tonight. Acts chapter 2, give me the one on the Bible. What version are we teaching out of the Doer's Bible? Yeah. The Doer's, yeah, we're reading out of the Doer's so, Bible tonight. Acts like you're paying attention, okay? That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the version that is... Uh, you read it, and then you do what it says. <laughs> Amen. 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 It's the doer's version of the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. And as we get into Acts chapter 2, uh, I'm so blessed because uh, we're about to read of the beginning of the church as it comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we get into this word tonight, we had a powerful message last week, yes. uh, but even more so tonight as we talk about how God is going to move in such a powerful way. Uh, through the Apostle Peter, uh, we're going to see here in this chapter uh, God's uh, amazing power as it comes down. Now, this is the fulfillment of the promise that Jesus gave to his disciples. Come and wait in Jerusalem uh, for the gift of the Holy uh, that God is going to pour out on his children. Yes. Amen. And as we get into Acts chapters 2, we see this beginning to happen for all of us. 
Amen. We are going to take some powerful lessons from here tonight because not only does this impact the church when the church started, but this impacts us as believers today. In order for us to do what God has called us to do, we have to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. We've got to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to do the things that God has called us to do. When we try to do things on our own power and get ahead of God, when we try to do things uh, and, and run, run in front of what the Holy Spirit is doing, oftentimes that leads to disaster. Because we try to do things on our own power, but God is saying, wait a minute, if you'll just wait for me, if you'll wait for me to fill you with power, if you wait for me to do it in my time, everything will go according to plan. The Bible says in Proverbs, it says, uh, uh, pro uh, devote your ways to the Lord and he will fulfill your plans. Amen? Amen. And so we thank God for all he's doing in our lives. We're going to open with a, a, a word of prayer and then we're going to jump right into our word tonight. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, for your mercy, Lord God. Let me get out of the way, Father God, so that the Spirit, Lord God, I could feel the Spirit in this room tonight, so that the Spirit can have his way and speak these words of power, of love, and of discernment. We ask you, God, for wisdom tonight, Lord God. The Bible says if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And so tonight, Lord God, as we get into our chapter, Acts chapter 2, Lord, we just ask for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Just as you led the disciples, just as you led the apostles, just as you led the people in the upper room, Father God, so lead us tonight, Father God. Fill us, Lord God, to the full with your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for dying for us on that cross so that we could have eternal life tonight. And so, Father, I pray over these that are here under the sound of my voice in this room and online, Father God, that you would touch them right where they are, that you would open their eyes to see, open their ears to hear, and their hearts to receive what you have for us today, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you praise. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody says, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I want, to see, I want to share something here that as we get into this word tonight, the, the disciples are in the upper room and they're praying. And as they're praying, the Holy Spirit comes down like a, a, a rushing wind, a powerful rushing wind. And uh, the Holy Spirit comes and it looks like tons of fire resting on the people. And as the people are getting filled with the Holy Spirit, this radical infilling, amen, we see that, uh, that all of a sudden the gifting of the Holy Spirit, the speaking in tongues, the evidence of the Holy Spirit makes itself known. And as the Holy Spirit is making itself known, Things start to happen and people take notice. Yes. I want you to know, believers that are listening to me here and online, that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, people take notice. That's right. They know that there's something different about you. They know okay. that there's a light that's shining in you. Yeah. They know that there's that you're not like everybody else. In fact, when you walk in the room, Valerie Parmalee, you walk in the room, the atmosphere changes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's the power of the Holy Spirit at work through you, in you, and through you. I want you to say it out loud. I love that the Holy Spirit works in me and through me. Yes, amen, amen. So I'm going to read the first section, and then I'm going to call on you uh, to read. Uh, when I call on you, please unmute your phone or your device, and then read the section that I'm asking you to read, and we're going to talk about that Hallelujah. section. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2. Father, be yes. with us in Jesus' name. Now, when the day of Pentecost came... They were all together in one place. Say it out loud, all together. All, all together. together. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. That's powerful. Watch this now. They're in the house and they're praying and they're seeking God. They're waiting for the gift. Remember that the day of Pentecost is 50 days after the Passover, right? Right? 50 days after the Passover, Pentecost, 50, right? Jesus, after 
after he was raised from the dead, he appeared for the next 40 days, 40 meaning the number of preparation. And then the disciples saw him taken up into heaven, as we talked about last week. Yep. And 10 days after that, he says, wait for the gift. And 10 days after that, giving a total of 50 days, Penta, Pentecost, <coughs> amen. Then the Holy Spirit came and fell on the entire house. Now, I love this because uh, when the Holy Spirit comes with power in your life and in my life, wow, wild things begin to happen. Uh, I remember being uh, at a prayer meeting one time and being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, like a new touch. I got saved and it was filled with the Holy Spirit, but this was a radical infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I began to speak in tongues and I didn't even know, I didn't know what was happening to me. It was wild. Something was happening to me and I knew that the Holy Spirit was touching me and filling me. Amen. And I just, it just started to overflow out of my mouth. And it was crazy because I remember looking at Jennifer and looking around and I was just like, oh my God, this is crazy what's happening here. But it was the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to share this with you. That when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, amen, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, there's no way that you could possibly remain the same person you were. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit brings the power of God, the witness of God. Amen. And then you have a testimony from God. And you can say, man, I can remember the day that I got saved. I remember the day that I got filled. I remember the day that everything changed for me and nothing was the same after that. Say amen, somebody. Amen. 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 It was powerful. Powerful. Watch this. Verse number five. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Remember, they had just celebrated the Passover. And the Passover was one of three feasts where they were required to come to, uh, to Jerusalem to celebrate that holiday together, that feast together. And so, if there were people who came from all over uh, Israel and from all over the surrounding countries who were Jews... They would have come to Jerusalem at a time uh, for the celebration and there would have been many people from many different nations there. So when the Holy Spirit falls uh, uh, 50 days after, after Pentecost, people from all over the other countries and all over Jerusalem, all over Israel are seeing what's happening. Amen. Watch this. Uh, we've been to, listen, we've been to, uh, everyone's been to uh, large festivals. Everyone has been, has everyone seen on TV when they have uh, the New Year's, the New Year's Eve ball with Ryan Seacrest? You see people come to New York from all over the world for the, the dropping of the ball. We see Mardi Gras in New Orleans where people come from all over the world for Mardi Gras. We see, uh, as bikers, we see uh, 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 Sturgis, Sturgis, South Dakota, where people come from all over the country to come to be in one place for a few days and hang out. Well, this is exactly what's happening in Israel. Yeah. In Jerusalem, there's people from all over the country, all over the other countries coming to celebrate this feast together. So when the power of the Holy Spirit falls, wow, people from all over the place are witnessing what Jesus is doing. Ooh. This is powerful. Verse, six. Verse number five. Here we go. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, that sound of a rushing wind, a crowd came together in bewilderment. Like, what is that sound? Because each one of them heard them speaking in his own language. Yeah. Utterly amazed, they said, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Aren't they all from the same little town? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? The Parthians, the Medes, the Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome were there, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Oh my gosh, why is what is what happening here? These guys are speaking by the utterance of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, 
and they don't know what they're saying, but the people around them understand what they're saying. And the people around them are hearing them praise the name of God and praise uh, and giving God glory and telling of all the good things that God has done in their own native language. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, there's many of us here, their native language is Spanish or Russian or, or what other languages. Imagine you hearing somebody speaking in tongues and you're, it's making sense to you because they're speaking it in your language. Wow. So as we see this here, all these people have gathered in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit falls. Amen. The sound of a mighty rushing wind like a freight train going by. Everyone has heard a train go by. When that train goes by, we have a train here locally in, in Riverside that goes by not too far from here. And uh, Jennifer and I used to uh, take care of an old elderly couple and their house was across the street from the train tracks. Remember this? And all night long, that train would go by and keep you awake all night long. But the people who had lived in that area were used to it. Right off of Indiana and Van Buren, right? Mm -hmm. The train goes right by there. And I remember hearing that sound and the house shaking and all that kind of stuff was going on. I was like, what in this world is happening here? But that's how it was when the Holy Spirit fell. Everyone heard this sound of that mighty rushing wind. It was like a freight train going by. You could not deny the power of that sound. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Watch this. Because here's what happens. Do you realize that everything that the Holy Spirit does has a sound to it? Mm -hmm. he, he Listen, he speaks in a still small voice. But when you don't listen to the still small voice, he talks to you in big, loud circumstances. Come on, somebody say amen, amen to that. Amen. The Holy Spirit speaks in a still small voice. But when you ignore the voice of God and he's trying to tell you something, then if you ignore him, he has no choice to but to bring big, loud circumstances. Come on. And some of those circumstances have a big sound. And you go through some big trials and you go through some big issues. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love this because the sound is so big, it was undeniable. And these people are there all together and they're bewildered. They say, what in the heck is that sound? And then all of a sudden, why do we see the evidence of that sound? These people are talking in, in foreign languages and we can understand them. Wow. This is amazing. Okay. Let me have somebody read. Uh, Aunt Mary, I'm going to have you read. Uh, verse 12 through 14. Um, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What could this mean? Others mocking them said, They're full of new wine. Yes. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Man of Galilee and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Keep... Or... Go ahead, go ahead. For, uh, for this, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is, uh, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen, amen, hallelujah. So look at what look look what's happening here. The people have gathered around. The people are witnessing this amazing miracle happen. They're seeing people filled with the Holy Spirit. They're hearing the evidence of a change by the way that they're speaking in tongues. And the people are so perplexed that they're saying to each other, what could possibly be happening? What could cost possibly be causing this? Why are we seeing this amazing miracle happen? What does this mean? I want to ask you a question. Do the people who knew you before Christ... And now know you after Christ. Have they seen a change in you? Have they seen enough change in you? The evidence of the Holy Spirit at work in your life. Through your words. Come on somebody. Through the things that you say and the things that you do. Have they seen the evidence of the change that is in you? Thank you Jesus. Because a non-believer says, I wonder what happened to them. Ah, come on somebody. The believer says, oh yeah, that person got the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the non-believer says, man, how did this happen? They were a no good drug addict, drinker. They were a no good this and that. They were a, man, you know, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't trust them. Uh, the minute I turned my back on them, I wouldn't trust that person. Amen. 
But now all of a sudden, man, this guy's got a glow about him. His language is different. His demeanor is different. Everything is different about him. I can tell something has happened to him on the inside. What does this mean? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 14. Verse 14. Peter stood up with the 11 and he addressed the crowd and he says, fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully. Oh my goodness. Peter, who, who, who in the gospels struggled so much. Peter, who, who failed God, who fumbled God, who, who, uh, who turned his heart away from God. The same Peter who disowned Jesus. Come on, somebody. The same Peter who left Jesus in a bad spot. Now, when Jesus restores him in John 21, and he says, Peter, do you love me more than these? If you do, then feed my sheep. Lord, you know, I love you. Remember the story of, of him restoring Jesus, uh, restoring Peter. And now we see that when the power of the Holy Ghost comes and the power of the Holy Ghost falls on the disciples, that Peter stands up, he's humbled, he's humbled, but now he's bold. And I wonder if you realize that God uh, makes such a difference in your life where we might have been that old foolish person. But now when God comes in, we get humble and we get become bold for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs uh, 28, verse number one, that the wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. I'm blessed because God has made me bold for the kingdom of God. I know that when I walk in a place, amen, I can change the atmosphere. I don't walk in by myself. I've got the power of the Holy Ghost when I walk right. in, amen. Right. And God has given me the power of, uh, uh, over situations to pray That's and right. to speak a word. Come on, somebody, to speak a word in due season, hallelujah, and to share things with people with the boldness that I have. Come on, somebody. That is the power and the boldness that the Holy Spirit gives each believer. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, amen to that. Amen. Now, Peter, watch this. Peter, who had failed God, fumbled God, uh, turned away from God. Now, all of a sudden, he's filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And he speaks to his own countrymen. And he says, men living in Galilee and Jerusalem and Judea, let me share this with you. This is powerful. This is now an amazing story we're about to see. Watch this. Verse number 15. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Come on, somebody say, I'm, I'm ready to prophesy. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to have Miss Juanita read from 18 through 21. Amen, 18 through 21. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, and I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy, prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, yes. blood and fire and vapor of the smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord, Abby, shall be saved. Come on, somebody. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so powerful. I love this. I love this. This reminds me of the story of the thief, of the Jesus dying on the cross. In between the two, the two thieves. Remember the story? Mm -hmm. The one thief is telling Jesus, well, if you're really the son of God mm -hmm. and you're really da, 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 and you're really who you say you are, then get us down, get yourself down from here and get us down too. Mm -hmm. And the other man tells him, he says, don't you realize who this is? He says, we are being crucified and rightly so for the sins that we have committed. But this man has committed no sin he looks at Jesus right in the eye and Jesus looks right back at him and says, he says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Amen. Jesus says this to him. He says, 
don't worry. From today on, you shall be with me in paradise. Amen. I want to tell you what this, this says. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. God always creates an opportunity for you to come to the cross and to meet him. He will meet you right where you are in this world and in this life. He will meet you in your trouble. He will meet you in your distress. He will meet you in your addiction. He will meet you in your troubles. Amen. And when you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, Miss Sylvia, I'm going to have you read uh, verses 22 through 25. Okay. People of Israel, listen. God endorsed Jesus of the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen, and his spirit Prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nail him to a cross and kill him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken right. for his right beside me. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. Mm -hmm. My body will also live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is powerful because look what's happening here. Oh, put your foot in your mouth, Peter is preaching the gospel. Amen. Preaching the gospel. He's preaching Jesus lived. He's preaching Jesus died. And he's preaching Jesus rose again from the dead. Hallelujah. That is the good news of the gospel. As we are getting close to, we're two weeks away from Easter. Amen. Where we celebrate, that's our resurrection Sunday. But let me tell you that every time you get a chance to witness Every time you get a chance to tell your story, every chance you get uh, to be around people, amen, your testimony should hinge on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. That is the good news of the gospel. You can tell people this, listen, I was dead, but God is the one who made me alive. Uh, and the only way he was able to do that was he had to come back to life himself from the grave. Come on, somebody. He lived, he died, and he rose again so that I could have life in him. And now my life has changed because I've come to the foot of the cross. I've given God my life. I've confessed my sins. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit and with the power of God. And now I can stand here with boldness and tell you God is a good God. God is a merciful God. God is a God who keeps his promise. Come on, somebody. Let the amen. church say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I love this. I love this because now Peter is preaching a sermon to the people who are listening to him. All, all of a sudden, Peter, who had walked away from God, who had turned away from God, mm -hmm. is now being used by God to preach the gospel. Amen. Oh, I love this. I love this. Okay, let's pick it up. Where are we at? Okay. Uh, who just read? Sylvia? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me have uh, you. I'm going to have you read 27 through 28. 27, 28? Yes. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your holy one see to save. You have made known to me the past of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. So we see now that here Jesus is fulfilling the scripture, the things that were prophesied against him as David wrote, uh, as David wrote this in Psalms, Jesus is now fulfilling, hallelujah, the prophecy of the scriptures that are being spoken out over him. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me have Dolores Arevalo read number 29 through 31. You got to take your you got to take your phone off of mute. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, perfect. Go ahead. Okay. I missed the name of the book. Uh, we're in Acts chapter 2, verse 29 and 30. Okay, we can come back to you if that's okay. Or if you, are you there? I got it. Okay, go ahead. I got it. Okay, brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants yes. on his throne. Keep going, one more, one more. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. Amen, amen. Now here's, now here's what I love about this. This is powerful. Because remember, Jesus was famous when all this was happening. Jesus had only been crucified two months before. So when everyone came uh, to the city, this was, the, uh, this was the, uh, the, the topic of conversation on everybody's lips. Can you believe they did this to this guy? Can you believe they crucified? Some said that he was the king. Some said that he was the savior. Some said he was the Messiah. Some said he was a phony, but whatever it was, that's what the people were talking about. Kind of like our day today. Mm -hmm. What is everyone talking about? Stimulus checks. Uh, everyone's talking about uh, uh, the new president. Uh, the vaccines. Everyone's talking about the vaccine. Come on, somebody. Everyone's talking about COVID, right? This is the topic of the time. And what's happening here, as Peter is preaching this message to the people, he's discussing the topic of the time. The topic of the time is Jesus. Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus raised from the dead. Because don't forget now, after he was raised from the dead, he showed himself to more than 500 people. Every time he appeared, he was appeared to a group of people. So people were going around... Telling everybody else, oh my God, you'll never believe what happened to me. I, you know that guy that they killed, that they hung on the cross, that they crucified? I saw him over here in this group of people. I saw him over here with his disciples. I saw him over here at the grocery store. I saw him over here. Amen. So this is what was happening. This was the topic of the time. So watch Peter uh, as he's preaching this gospel. As he's laying out the prophecy, as he's confirming everything with the facts of what everyone has seen, amen, that now it gets heavy. Watch, this is so powerful. Verse 32. Verse number 32. And God raised Jesus to life. How do we know this? Because we are all witnesses of this fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out... On uh, and it's poured it out on what you now see and hear. Hallelujah. So watch this now. Peter is an eyewitness as to what is happening. And this is what he's preaching about. The Bible says that we have overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Come on, somebody. This is powerful. Peter is standing up, giving his personal testimony about what he has seen, what he has heard, and what he has experienced. And now the evidence of the being filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, is no one can deny it. The people are talking in tongues. The people are seeing the evidence. They are hearing the witness of the people who have seen him be raised to life. Oh, let me just tell you that there is nothing stronger than a personal witness. You know, whenever, whenever we see a car accident happen, amen, everybody pulls over to the side. And as soon as the police come, they want to talk to as many eyewitnesses as possible. They want to find out, okay, what did you see? This guy turned left, the light turned red, but he turned left and the car ran the light. Amen. Okay, then what did you see? Well, I saw he was speeding from this side. And right. So they try to get the best compilation of information to make the story uh to make it make sense and this is exactly what's happening when you see something and you are an eyewitness to somebody's change to somebody's healing to somebody's deliverance to somebody's uh, a salvation there is no denying an eyewitness account oh hallelujah hallelujah okay verse number 34 miss lupe let me have you read verse number 34 through 36 Yes, Justin, let me have you read 34 through 36. Okay, focusing on my eyes. 
For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, did you hear this? Look what he says. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this thing. God has made this Jesus, not the Jesus is before, not the Jesus is after. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. Watch this now. Because here, Peter is giving the facts. He's saying, listen, you guys crucified him. You guys uh, hung the Son of God. You guys hung the Messiah on the cross. But that's okay. Look what he's about to say. But that's okay because God had already planned and knew that this was going to happen. Oh, my God, this is powerful. Okay. Uh, Didi, let me have you read 37 through 39. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ Keep going. for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, keep going, one more. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Amen. 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 Yeah. How many of you get spam phone calls on your cell phone? And uh, yeah, and, and they want you to renew your 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 car uh, warranty. Come on, somebody. They want you to sign up for. Uh, the COVID, they want you to do all that stuff. You get spam calls all day long on your cell phone. Amen. And let me just tell you something. People don't call anyone they don't want to talk to. Uh -huh. When you call somebody, uh, Aunt Lola, you, when you call somebody, it's because you want to talk to somebody. Kimberly, when you call somebody, it's because you want to talk to somebody. Amen. Sylvia, when you call somebody, it's because you want to talk to somebody. And here's what happens with us. Look what he says here. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far away from God and for all whom the Lord our God will call. Oh my God. Amen. Jesus said this. Jesus said in John 15, 16, he says, you didn't choose me. He says, I chose you. You didn't call me. I called you. You didn't look for me. But I never took my eyes off of you. Ooh, Amen. Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Watch what he says here. I love this. He says, Peter replied, verse number 38, repent. Turn, yes. What does repentance mean? Repentance turn means around. to turn yes. away from the thing that you were doing. Yes. To not turn 360 degrees, not in a full circle, 180 degrees, which means to turn away. exactly away from the thing you were doing. Yes. Amen. 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 Repent. Turn away from that old life. Turn away from that old lifestyle. Turn away from those old things that you were doing that led to death. Yes. Amen. Repent and be baptized. In other words, repent and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Repent and, and, and give your life to God and let him fill you. <coughs> hallelujah. With his Holy yes. Spirit. Watch what he says here. Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. hallelujah. That is cool. Let me just tell you that though your salvation is free, it costs Jesus a lot. Yeah. 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 Though your salvation is free, he gave, he gave all so you could have all. Yeah. You gave none. But all you have to do is receive the all. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. That's powerful. Right? I can, I can give the king of the world. I can't give him nothing. But he loves me so much. He will give me everything. Oh, come on. Say amen to that. That's powerful. Amen. All right. 
40. All right, I'm going to have you read verse 40 and 41. Loud and proud, baby girl. Loud and proud, baby. Sing. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this preserved generation. Perverse. Perverse, perverse generation. Perverse generation. Then who's gladly received his... Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and the day they and the day and that day about three thousand souls were added to them. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. Did you hear that? Amen. Peter yes. Peter preaches his first message under the power of the Holy Spirit, and three thousand people get saved. I love that they didn't have a, a mega church. He wasn't with a microphone in a mega church. He didn't, have he didn't have a bullhorn. Come on, he didn't have a bullhorn standing on top of a car in a crowded neighborhood in the inner city. Come on, somebody. Amen. He was preaching the word of God under the power of God, and he got the results of God. Oh, oh, say that again, Pastor John. Look what he said. A child of God speaking the word of God empowered by the Holy Spirit of God right. will always produce the results of God. That's right. That's right. Wow. Let me say that one more time. A child of God speaking the word of God with the power of God will always produce the results of God. Come on, somebody amen. say amen to that. That's powerful. Amen. amen. And this is the leading of the Holy Spirit. I love this. Watch what he says here. He says, with many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with the people. He was pleading with the people, please give your life to God. He pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that very day. Hallelujah. Let the amen. church say amen to that. Amen. That is powerful. That is powerful. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, Valerie Parmalee, I'm going to have you read 42 through 44. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Amen. 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 Okay, now let's let's understand something here. Why do we have Bible study? We have Bible study because the Lord told us do not forsake the gathering of the saints, mm -hmm. the gathering together of the saints. This is why we have church. This is why we have Bible study. Amen. We do it because the more time that we spend together, the more we build a sense of community and belonging to each other. Amen, somebody. Amen. And God does everything in the kingdom of God. He does everything by connection. Yes. Who are you connected to? The Bible says where two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. So if I'm a believer and I have the spirit of God and I'm connected to a believer that they have the spirit of God. Amen. Then, the, then we have a connection and we're sharing about the things of God, talking about the things of God, amen, so that when other people come, they join in that connection and there's power that comes from that, amen. So this is why we spend so much time together. I got a great group of guys here, Greg, Justin, Mark, amen. Uh, we're together and we're always talking about the Lord. The minute we get in the van on Wednesday, okay, Mark, what's the scripture of the day? Yeah. Right? We pray, we get the scripture of the day, we start dissecting the word of God, amen? But what does that do? That empowers us, that inspires us, that encourages us, amen? And we build a sense of community together. And this is what's happening in the early church. As we're going to see, they went from house to house, breaking bread with each other and talking about the things of God. This was the, uh, the early church met in homes, small groups of five people, 10 people, 20 people, whatever it was to, to, to spark uh, or to fan the flames of what the Holy Spirit was doing in the lives of the believers. Yes. This is powerful. Okay. Mark, let me have you read. Uh, Peggy, Mark, let me have you read. From 40, 45. Forty four through the end. And the 
Can you hear me? I can hear you. You or Peggy want to read? Go ahead. Now all the groups were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Amen. Amen. Wow, that's powerful. So here's what happens. Listen, so we build this sense of community. We build each other up by the preaching of the gospel and the sharing and the testifying of what God has done so that when you and I are empowered, encouraged, and inspired with each other, when we get around people who don't have Jesus, they want what we have. Remember when, uh, when Peter and John were going to the, into the temple at the hour of prayer, I think we're going to cover this next week, there was a beggar there at the gate. And uh, Peter and John are walking in, they see the beggar there. And as they're getting ready to walk into the temple at the hour of prayer, uh, mm -hmm. Peter and John go over to the beggar and they say, hey, 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 look at us. Look at us. Look at me real quick. Look at me. I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And the beggar raises his eyes and raises his, his, his donation cup, expecting that he was going to get something. And the apostles, uh, John and Peter, looked at him right in the eye and they said this. They said, silver and gold I do not have. Oh, hallelujah. Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, the Holy Spirit and the power of God, I give unto you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so it says that they took him by the right hand and raised him up and he stood up. Immediately the Bible says that his feet were strengthened, his ankles were strengthened and he stood up. Hallelujah. And he went jumping and praising God into the temple with them at the hour of prayer. Yeah. Amen. Wow. This is why, listen, this is why we spend time together building each other up. Pouring into each other in one accord so that the power that's in you and the power that's in me is going to affect the people who are all around us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that daily, everywhere we go, uh, when we're uh, out in the shopping mall, out in the, out in the grocery store, out in the, uh, at, at the dealership, the dealership, wherever you want to be, uh -huh. and then you have a chance to share what you have with somebody who doesn't have it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So that the church will be added to our number Daily, let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. This it concludes our study for tonight. Amen. It says, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. But why did this happen? Because the disciples were all in one accord. My wife says key. this to me yeah, all the time. This is the key. Have we have to be God in one accord. Yes. Remember yes. that a house yes. divided will not stand. Yes. If your church is divided, if there's gossip in your church, in your group, if there's backstabbing, backbiting, talking bad, come on somebody, doing all these things, coarse, coarse jesting, all that kind of stuff, right? where the Holy Spirit is being stifled and pressed down. Amen. Then God cannot work through that. That's right. God works through empowerment, community. Yes. All, all of us being in one accord. That's why before we have Bible study, uh, this Zoom meeting, we sit down to eat together. Yeah. Because what does that do? That puts our guard down. Amen. That builds our spirit up. Come on, somebody. And we become all together in one community. Yes. Hallelujah. That's how the God works. God works through the power of us being together. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's close with a word of prayer. And I want to thank you all for being with us. We're going to continue next Friday night. Acts, uh, oh, next Friday night, uh, we'll be at Biker Tabernacle. Amen. So hopefully we can stream it live on Zoom. So, okay. Okay. All right. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let everybody know. We'll let everybody know. If you're here in Southern California, please come. If you're somewhere else in Northern California, Oklahoma, Michigan, yeah. wherever you are, pray for us. It's Love. going to be powerful. Amen. Yeah. Let's close with a word of prayer. God bless. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord God.
for your love and your mercy tonight, Lord God. Help us to see, Lord God, what you are saying to us tonight, Lord God, that we have to be all in one accord so that, Lord God, you would add to the church daily. Father God, we give you our lives, Lord God. You said anybody who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I love that, Lord God, because, Lord, you don't put any restriction on us, only that we call out to you, Lord God. And Father, I'm encouraged, Lord God, as I see Peter sharing uh, uh, sharing the gospel and 3,000 people got saved in that, that first day. That is amazing, God. And I pray, Lord God, for each one here under the sound of my voice in my home and, uh, and uh, who are connected to us online, that you would fill us so full of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that it would be bursting out of us, that people would see and recognize and say, what does this mean? How is that person so different? Because they have the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Lord, fill us to the full till we overflow. That it's not only is the Holy Spirit working in us, but it's working through us to touch everyone around us. Father, we give you praise today, Lord. We thank you for this great salvation that we have received. Now, Lord God, give us the boldness, just like Peter had the boldness to share it with everyone who will listen. Father, we thank you, Lord. We ask you to be with us tonight. Bless everyone here under the sound of my voice. Father, we give you praise. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody says? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. All right, everybody, have a great night. God bless you. We'll let everybody know what's up for next week.